Brothers and sisters, once again, we want to thank God for another Sunday that we can worship and praise the Lord. I want to greet you all wherever you are in Jesus' name. I want to remind you that uh, we are not able to gather together as a congregation, but God has provided this privilege that we can be able to reach you through internet or through online. And this is our joy because God has made it so. My name is Jonah Yeko. I'm a pastor of Sediqua Pentecostal Fellowship. And I, I just want us to read a scripture uh, today. Today is a, a, a special day for us all over the world. Even um, I heard yesterday President uh, uh, Trump saying that uh, people should gather and just thank God for this day. Now it means that there is something special about Easter, something special about the resurrection. And I just want us to briefly read the story of the, the resurrection of Mark from the book of Mark, um, from the book of Mark, the resurrection story from the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 1 uh, to 8. It says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, seated, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, what a wonderful day you have brought us into. What a wonderful day that you have made it that we can all gather together to celebrate the resurrection of your son, the only son, Jesus Christ, who death could not contain, who death could not put down. Lord, we pray that as we look into your word, we pray that you speak to us on the importance of the resurrection, the value of the resurrection, and what resurrection mean to us and to you who is our Lord and Savior. I pray that may the words from my mouth, may the thoughts, may all meditations I have, may it be directed towards you. And I pray, Lord, for our listeners. I pray for those people who are viewing us, oh God, that you shall bless them today, that you shall change them, that they may see that the resurrection of Jesus Christ was a big change to the entire world. And we bless you as we go through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brethren, we thank Jesus for today. Today is the Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is a day that we all celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death. This is a very significant day. Or the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a significant event that took place in history of man. Never in history did a person die and resurrect and continue to live again. We hear stories of um, Lazarus who died and Jesus came and resurrected him. But Lazarus went back and died again. And there are many people who have died and came back to life. But they have died again. But Jesus is the only person who died Resurrected, nobody prayed for him like Lazarus was prayed for. No doctor came to put an injection in his body and cause him to rise again. But he resurrected on his own and he continued to live and never died again. This is our joy. This is our confidence in Christ. Death, brethren, is feared by all living things. Because 
death robs us of a very valuable thing, that is life. Death is feared because it robs us of life. Yet, every living thing was created to live. Especially we human beings, we were created to live. But death has come to rob us or to take away from us this life that God has given us freely. And anything that threatens a human being or any living thing, the living thing will look for ways of reacting, of trying to keep and fight that thing that tries to rob it of its life. Coronavirus, brethren, has come to rob us of our lives. It has come to threaten us. It is making people to, 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 to panic all over. And the world governments are looking for ways. They have come up with strategies of seeing how to fight this virus. And some of the strategies that the, 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 the world governments have come up with are preventative strategies. Like now, washing of hands, um, wearing of masks, keeping safe distance, and staying at home. Why are they so concerned? Because death should not rob us of the life that God has given us. Another strategy they have used is they are using uh, drugs. And even some of the drugs are being now researched so that this coronavirus may not come again and fight us. We also have vaccines that are now being researched on so that we can live. But the other strategy that none of, I've not heard the governments, any government say that we should apply is the strategy of putting our faith in the resurrected Christ. Hallelujah. That is a strategy that has never, I've, I've not heard, it's only our president who once said that let us pray. But I would wish that all the leaders would say, brethren, we are trying our best and this coronavirus is still fighting us. Can we now employ, can we now use prayers and encourage all their citizens all over the world to pray and pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Why, brethren? Because Jesus overcame death. And if he was able to overcome death, then he can also overcome coronavirus. He can overcome the coronavirus. Christ is the one who conquered death. And today we are celebrating this conquest that he displayed on that particular day. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me will, will live even though he dies. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. That is the book of John chapter 11 verse 25. This is what Jesus was telling Martha. That Martha, I am the resurrection and I am life. In other words, Jesus is the resurrection today and is the life. That life that coronavirus is trying to rob, take from us. Jesus is the one who is that life. And he says, he who believes in me will live. In other words, he who believes in me will not die. And even though he dies, he will continue to live because Jesus is the author. Jesus is the conqueror of death. That is my joy, brethren, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. During this time of uncertainty, when we don't know when this uh, uh, season is going to be over, when we don't know when the lockdown is going to be uh, lifted out, when we don't know when the children are going to go back to school, I want to encourage us to put our trust in the resurrected Jesus, the resurrected Savior. Hallelujah. Jesus, may you be glorified. You are our reason of survival. You are our reason of living. I want to share with us three reasons why we should celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And especially when we are celebrating it today. I know you are in your homes. You should 
today maybe you'll be celebrating with friends saying how much God has done for you. But I want to give us three reasons why we as Christians should celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number one, it is because Jesus demonstrated that he has power over death. We celebrate because he demonstrated, he did it himself. In the book of John chapter 10, and verse, verse 17 and 18, he said, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority, hallelujah. Jesus, I have authority to lay down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. What was Jesus telling his disciples? Jesus was telling his disciples that even before they knew, and, and in one occasion he told them that yes, the son of man is going to die. And after, after three days he'll resurrect. And he was telling them that he has the authority. In other words, Jesus, although he was living, he knew right well within himself that although death will come, he will succumb to it, but he was allowing death. He was allowing death to fulfill what was prophesied by Isaiah. But note that death had authority over him. He said, I have authority to lay down my life and to take it up again. In other words, Jesus demonstrated that he has power over death. And having said that, having said that, after the resurrection, and when he now appeared to, when he, he now appeared to, to John in the island of Patmos, he tells John in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 17, to show us that, yes, Jesus has power over death. He said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hate. I'm the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hate. Now, when you have a key to a room, you have access to that room. In other words, where death is, Jesus has the key. When he died, he told death, come, I'm locking you here. And it says, it is only when I'll permit you to come out, that is when you shall be there. But I have the key. In other words, Jesus has authority. And brethren, our, our joy as Christians is that Jesus demonstrated his power over death. When he was in that tomb, as we have just read in the book of Mark, there was this stone that was put uh, uh, um, uh, on, on the mouth of the tomb. And it was sealed. In fact, the Jews knew very well. Somehow behind their conscience, they knew that Jesus was going to resurrect. And if you read in the book of Matthew, they, they, they said, they went, to, they went to, to, to Pilate and told him, please, can you secure the tomb so that his disciples should not come and take him away. And then it is said that this man resurrected. They knew very well something was telling them, this man, what he says is true. And for sure, there were soldiers there. It was well secured. But when the time came for the Son of Man to come out of death, it did not matter how many soldiers were there. It did not matter how much cement was put to seal that place. He resurrected. Hallelujah. He conquered death. He demonstrated that I have the power. And I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister who is there at home, that this period when the coronavirus is attacking us, it's like a period of death. It's like a period when we have been robbed. It's like a period when people are in so much gloom. There is no movement. There is lockdown. There are no activities. It is like death. But I want to encourage you that the one who has power over death is able to finish this period. You and me who are always praying, I want you to believe you me that Jesus who has overcome death 
Jesus who came from that tomb, he has the power to destroy even this corona pandemic that we are in. We are in. This is the time that the resurrected Christ is going to perform miracles in our lives. This is the time that Jesus is demonstrating his authority. And I want to I want to demonstrate and I want to show you how Jesus is demonstrating his authority, brethren. People are praying. And Jesus is showing that I have already overcome death. I, I don't want to dispute what the government has said, but it was predicted. They kind of predicted that the first week of April here in Kenya, we shall have about 1,000 deaths. I want to thank God. And you are my witnesses, you who is listening to me. That God who is merciful, God whom we have been praying to, God who is the author, the conqueror, the conqueror of death, has prevented this death, has prevented this infection that we are talking of just around 200 maybe by today of people who have, not, who have been infected. Not 1,000 brethren. And I believe that if we continue to soldier on in prayer, this author of life will indeed make sure that we do not reach the figure that is being anticipated. It is not by our authority, but it is by his own authority. God is on our side, brethren, when we are praying. Yes, that is what it means that he conquered death. The person who has conquered death that will be able to finish this pandemic. And for sure, he will do it. We shall see it and we shall praise his name. The second reason why we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that resurrection is the foundation of our faith in Christ Jesus. Resurrection is the foundation of our faith in Christ Jesus. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 to, to 18. It says, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. <laughs> and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then to be found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are in your sins. Oh, God help us. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are also lost. That is what it means. The resurrection is the foundation of our faith. That if Christ has not been resurrected, then indeed, our faith, our trust, our belief in Jesus is useless. It is useless. And it keeps on saying that if, 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 we, if it is just to live for Christ, that is why we are living and not looking forward towards the resurrection of even our own bodies, then we are most to be pitied on this earth. But brethren, I want to encourage us to know that Christ did not remain in the grave. Because if Christ remained in the grave, then we Christians, we are like all other religions whose leaders also died. That's the difference with Christianity. That we believe in a living God. We believe in Christ who is resurrected. Resurrection is the pillar of our faith. Resurrection is what gives us confidence, gives us courage, and gives us hope. And hope that Paul says does not disappoint. Hallelujah. So this is why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because it is the pillar of our faith. And like other religions, we brag about, we say that we shall live again. Just like our Savior lives again, we shall also live again. It is the confidence, it is this confidence in the resurrected Christ that empowered, Paul, that empowered Peter 
on that particular day. We read in the book of Acts chapter 2. That particular day when Peter was preaching, when they thought that they were drunk, Jesus reminded them that this same Christ whom you crucified, God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. It is the power of Jesus that gave Peter that courage. And it is this same resurrected Christ who had now empowered them with the power of the Holy Spirit that in chapter 3, when they went into the temple on the beautiful gate and they found this cripple there, they told him, silver and gold we do not have, but what we have we shall give you. And in the name of Jesus, they just fell, they just fell short of saying, in the name of Jesus, the resurrected one. They just say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You cannot talk about a name of a dead person. You may not have that courage because you don't know whether that person has power. But Paul Peter writes and says, we saw him. In fact, when he was giving testimony, he said, we saw him with our eyes. He resurrected and we saw him with our eyes. Those 40 days, they were with him. And so when he was talking about the power with the confidence, he was talking about the person whom we knew. And this is why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ because it is the cornerstone of our faith, brethren. Resurrection reaffirms, affirms our faith that we serve a living God. The resurrected Savior builds our confidence and trust in him that all things are possible. He encourages us to ask anything in his name and he will do it for us. Why? Because he's alive. I've never heard any dead person. All, all those dead leaders of other religions tell them, ask me anything and I will do it. No. They just went silent. But this one of ours, the one we trust in, Jesus, the Savior, the resurrected one, tells us, ask me of anything and I will do it. Resurrection gives us confidence that Christ we believe in is real. That Christ we believe in is all-powerful, he's dependable, he's faithful, and forever present in times of need. Even right now when this coronavirus is attacking us hard, Christ is present in times of need. And that's why we tell, that's why he tells us, behold, I am with you up to the end of the age. Lastly, brethren, the resurrection gives us hope to live. Hallelujah. The resurrection is the hope of our life. You know, hope is the expectation of a better life in the midst of challenges and difficulties. Hope is the expectation of life, continuity of life, or a better life in the middle of difficulties and challenges that we go through. Right now, we are struggling. We are going through a very challenging moment in the world when some of the supermarkets in other countries are closed, when the vehicles are not moving, when people are confined in their homes. It is difficult. But hope is what makes us to soldier on. Hope tells us that hang in there, just hang in there, because something is coming, something good is coming. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what gives us hope. We hope that even when we die, we shall live again. We hope that even when things are difficult, we shall live again. Because Jesus, who is the author of faith and resurrected, is the one who carries us through. Hope is what makes us live. We survive because of hope. And when we lose hope, we die very fast. In fact, any person who is sick and feels that the medicine I'm being given shall not treat me, shall not bring any change, that person is at the verge of, of dying. But if a sick person holds on and says, thank you, I know this medicine will treat me, I know this medicine will bring change, that person will live. And that is what hope is. Hope makes us survive. A hopeful person is one who looks for even a better future. Although we are going through this difficult time, I want to encourage you, look for a better future. Look for a better life, even after this life. At such a time as this, a person without hope will kind of feel, what is the purpose of living? Some people will feel so bored 
But one who has hope will have something to do. Keep yourself busy because, you know, life must continue. A person without hope will feel that they are rejected. Some of them will feel they are useless, they are dejected. Some will give up and even just decide to quit. But a person who has hope will say, no, I won't because I know there is something waiting for me. Brethren, hope is what makes us live. Hope is what makes us stick. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the one that continues to prompt us to live, to look ahead, to look ahead. He tells us, behold, I'm coming soon. So it doesn't matter the situation we are going through, this difficult time. He says, I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon for you. So I have a purpose to live. I have a purpose to fulfill what Jesus desires in my life. If you feel you are discouraged because of this corona pandemic that is there, I want to point you to Christ, the living one. I want to point you to the cross. I want to point you to the resurrected one that is no longer in the tomb, but is alive at the right hand of the Father. And he will surely deliver you. I want to pray with you wherever you are. Right now, wherever you are, I would want to ask you if you can kneel down wherever you are. Just find a space. Close your eyes. I want to pray for you. Maybe for some of you, you have now decided you want to commit your life and tell this Jesus to take all the fears that you have. I want to pray. First, I want to pray for those who love to give their hearts to Jesus. I want you to pray after me. Just say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are Lord. I thank you that you are the resurrected one, son of the living God. I invite you right now, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Forgive my fears. Forgive everything that is not right in my life. Wash me by your precious blood. I invite you to be Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to trust you every day in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to pray for you who is there at home. Maybe you are the challenges that you are going through. I want to point you to this man who gives us hope to live. Whatever your problem is, maybe you are sick, Maybe you don't have money right now, wherever you are. Maybe you may not have food. Maybe there are things that you need. Some of you probably are, 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 are so anxious that maybe the landlord will throw you out of the house. I pray that in Jesus' name, God will intervene. Just close your eyes and lift your hand and tell God as I, I also pray for you. Loving Father, you can see that hand. You can see that person who is going through this agony right now. The loving God, may you come to their help. May you come to their need. Those who need finances right now, may you provide. You are able to do it. Those who need food, they are short of food. They don't know whether this will last them up to the end of the month. May you, Lord, provide. I want to pray for this one who is scared that he or she will be thrown out of the house. I pray that you will speak to the landlord and the landlord will say, I have waved off. I've waived some money. I've waived the money for this month, the rent of this month. Lord, I pray that let it be so, because Christ, you are alive. And whatever you say is true. I pray, loving Father, may you protect your people. Give us confidence. Give us hope during this difficult time of Corona. And we want to trust you that, Lord, come what may. May we have our hope and our trust in you. You who is our resurrected Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift you up. May the Lord encourage you. May he point you to the cross. May he point you to himself that is alive. He's not just dead on that cross, but he's alive and alive forevermore. Amen. I want uh, to now invite uh, Pastor Carol to come and, uh, and close for us. And uh, you, maybe you have the numbers of our, of our M-Pesa uh, for, for pay bill.
please uh, you can uh, just use the pay bill to, to, to send in your offering and your tithes. And uh, for those of you who maybe wish to uh, maybe bring your, 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 your tithes to church, our offices are usually open for a few hours just for any such a person who may need some request uh, or some attendance. We do have our office open. Just feel free to come. And then you can also contact our pastors for any help. We are there to help you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you safe. May the Lord protect you during this difficult time. And let us put our hope and our trust in him. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you very much for being part of our service for today. And I'd just like to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and uh, type Sirico Pentecostal Fellowship and then click um, subscribe. And also thank you for following us on Facebook. Just remember to like our page. And thank you so much, Pastor Ayeko, for that beautiful word from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Thank you so much for each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for even the word that has come forth with power. We are just praying that you would continue to minister to us, dear Lord, with the word that we have had. Continue, my Father, ministering to our hearts and our spirits. Dear Lord, even as we end this service, we pray that, Lord, you would dismiss us in your love. We thank you. And we bless you, for it's in Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen.